So it was a very eventful weekend this weekend in Nashville for the annual Bitcoin 2024 conference. Obviously, the big headliner there that everyone was waiting to hear what was going to happen was, of course, President Trump and what he was going to speak about, what he was going to do and how Bitcoin is going to interlay into the next four years if he is elected. So there was a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation, but in today's video, I really want to cover what was actually said, what's a promise that's realistic, what's a promise that's maybe not, and there are actually a few surprises that came in there as well. So let's get into it. So again, this was happening on Saturday. Former US President Donald Trump did promise to build a strategic Bitcoin stockpile. We're gonna go back to that because the wording here is very, I don't want to say suspicious, but very specific. Um, and there's some other things we're going to follow up on in the next video as well. But he announced that he was doing a strategic Bitcoin stockpile on Saturday. The presidential candidate's keynote address followed a week of growing rumors and reports on this matter with a relatively vague announcement in a room packed full of Bitcoin. Quote, as the final part of my plan today, I'm announcing that if I am elected, it will be the policy of my administration, the United States of America, to keep 100% of all the Bitcoin the U.S. government currently holds or acquires into the future. So immediately after that, and before I get into this, so what does that mean right now? So let's say that all the Bitcoin that the, that the U.S. government currently holds, which as of today is 1% of the total supply or about 210,000 Bitcoin, so you can do the math on what today's price is on that. But he's also saying any future acquired Bitcoin. Now, if you're unfamiliar in the past, what has happened is Bitcoin that was acquired during Silk Road has been auctioned off previously and has just been sold off. And this announcement indicates that any Bitcoin that is seized or any Bitcoin that is taken by the U.S. government or the U.S. government acquires in any which way. He didn't indicate through mining. He didn't indicate through anything, but it's presumed that he means by anything that sees instead of selling it off he promises to keep it in the strategic reserve stockpile so immediately after that uh, the quote self-proclaimed bitcoin senator cynthia lummis announced very specific details of her own strategic bitcoin reserve proposal with a press release noting that the u.s would establish a decentralized network of secure bitcoin vaults operated by the United States Department of Treasury and seek to acquire 1 million total Bitcoin to hold. Now we're gonna go into the details of some of the problems with this in the next video, but that's a pretty bold statement and the reasoning we will go over to is actually quite interesting as well. So it's not immediately clear if Trump and Lummis are coordinating on this plan, but they are both Republicans that are were speaking at the conference and obviously the goal is here is to acquire and have a strategic reserve for Bitcoin. So the implications of this are huge, not only for you and me and having the US government acknowledge the value of Bitcoin, but think about the game theory of every other nation state. So if we start acquiring Bitcoin or we don't sell off our Bitcoin like Germany recently did and all these other companies, or, or sorry, all these other nations, then that signal will send every other country that, hey, if the US is leading the way and has a strategic reserve of Bitcoin, just like they have of gold and oil and other valuable commodities, that might be an arms race for everyone to start doing this, which again, as you know, with a finite supply would shoot up the price very dramatic. So there's a lot of implications of this that are very exciting. The libertarian part of me doesn't like this in the sense that the whole point of Bitcoin was to be non-governmental, was to be decentralized and not to be manipulated or influenced rather by powerful entities like a government or a nation. However, it also is freedom. They're kind of playing both sides. I mean, if they see the value in doing it, whether it's pandering or whether it's real, you know, it's, it's kind of spun off into a life of its own. But the reason I got into it is it was very anti-government and very pro-freedom, which it still is. But, you know, I take the contrarian view a little bit where I can see and totally understand why some people would not want this to happen and would totally not agree with governments and nation states getting in on this. I mean, it's already happened, I guess, with El Salvador and Bukele making it an official currency of their country and so on. But 
that was just one example and this could cascade into a huge arms race and just everyone trying to get some amount of bitcoin for their country since the u.s leads in this so it's very very interesting so uh, the pledge to establish a national bitcoin reserve and keeping all the btc currently held by the u.s government through seizures rounded out basically a 45 minute speech by trump and he promised to end the democrats regulatory onslaught against cryptocurrency companies and holders he also claimed if elected trump would refashion the u.s into a quote bitcoin superpower not really sure what he means there i think he just wants the u.s to lead in innovation and growing the industry is you know after listening to the speech that's what was assumed but there's no absolute clarity on that however he did follow up to say i'm laying out a plan to ensure that the united states will be the crypto capital of the planet he told the conference and everyone at the conference cheer he warned that the regulatory roadblock that plagued crypto companies under the biden administration would continuing stymieing innovation stateside under the would-be administration of his likely democratic challenger kamala harris if the democrats win this election every one of you will be gone trump told us they will be vicious they will be ruthless the meandering manifesto which was peppered with the former president's familiar rhetoric on immigration, the validity of the 2020 U.S. presidential election, and the dangers of the quote, woke mob, did not dig deep into the crypto fundamentals. In other words, this was a Bitcoin speech, but it was also a campaign speech. During the speech, Trump rattled off a popular crypto slang promising to send Bitcoin, quote, to the moon. He also glossed over familiar industry talking points, such as the importance of self-custodying one's crypto to promote personal freedom and privacy. Obviously, I'm personally a huge fan of that. And two values which BTC's proponents regard as essential to the ethos of the broader Bitcoin movement. Like I said, I got into this for freedom. I got into this for sovereignty, for privacy, and to have a money supply that's not controlled by an ever-growing government. We mainly focused on Bitcoin, obviously making sense that it was a Bitcoin conference, and the Bitcoin maxis were really upset that he mentioned the term, quote, crypto, because, as you know, Bitcoin maxis only find value in Bitcoin itself, not the innovation that's going on in DeFi or any other altcoins or any other sub-industries that go into that. In the first few minutes of the speech, Trump also rattled off the names of roughly a dozen celebrities and politicians who turned out to support him in the conference, including internet personality Jake Paul and Kid Rock. In his opening remarks, Trump touched upon a dizzying stream of seemingly unrelated topics, a recent attack on Israel, political leanings of Billy Ray Cyrus's daughter, and the death of firefighter Cordy Compratore, who was killed by the stray bullet during his attempted assassination. With all of this, like I said, he it was really a campaign speech, but he did kind of hone in on the crypto. And he gave a special nod to the BTC Incorporated CEO, David Bailey, who organized the conference, thanked him for inviting him, so on and so forth. Trump's BTC reserve plan echoed a policy proposal that RFK Jr. endorsed on Friday in a speech that took aim to Trump's shifting stance on cryptocurrency. Trump called Bitcoin a, quote, scam in an interview with Fox News all the way back in 2021, adding that he didn't like the asset because it's another currency competing against the dollar. He obviously got educated, and I think a lot of us know that that was Vivek Ramaswamy who really sat down and explained to him the value of what this is and how it is not a direct competing currency to the U.S. dollar. But Trump, in the latest speech, left a little room for doubt about his position on Bitcoin and the broader cryptocurrency industry in the lead up to the election. Quote, those who say that Bitcoin is a threat to the dollar have the story exactly backward. He also, as I wanna point out, confirmed that if he's elected, he will commute Ross Ulbricht's sentence to time served, which means he will basically release him from two life sentences from prison if he's elected. And if you're watching this video, you should know who he is. He was the owner and developer of Silk Road and was made an example of back in 2014 and was given two life sentences even though there was no murder there was no egregious crimes and he was just meeting market demand and that's a whole nother issue or a whole nother rabbit hole but he did confirm that he, um since it, it was very unjust that he was given two life sentences for setting up silk road he will commute the sentence which i'm i'm all for that was obviously a very unfair very brutal someone in the government i think it was the democrats like chuck schumer who found out about it wanted ross to be made an example of in a very extreme way which is just a very large overreach and abuse of power but 
I digress, the government is heavy handed, we'll just say. Basically in this case, it overall was a pretty good conference. There were some really interesting keynotes. If you haven't checked them out, just go to check out Bitcoin Magazine's YouTube channel and they will have sort of each keynote kind of segmented out. The one from Michael Saylor always is really interesting and really good. It was actually one of my favorite of the, enti the entire conference. And there was a, a keynote from the Ledger CEO, which, uh, you know, look, at, my, at this point in my career, Ledger used to be one of the most trusted hardware wallet cryptocurrency providers. Not anymore, in my opinion, after what happened two years ago. I'm never going to be storing any of my crypto on a ledger, I don't care. Yes, their, their new hardware wallets do look interesting and they do have new features. If you want me to do a video touching on that, I'm more than happy to. However, my personal belief is that I'm not ever gonna use those hardware wallets for any of my private keys or my crypto simply because I do not trust the company. I think that they're not as secure as they claim, but that's just one man's opinion. So if you like this video, go ahead and check out the next video that I'm doing, which is gonna be right up here on the screen. and. I will see you guys in the next video now. Crypto Renegade out.